How's it going ladies and gentlemen, it is Ash here and today we're going to be doing a Centennial Chieftain review and basically go over the stats and tell you all of the best things and the worst things that the tank has to offer all of us on World of Tanks console. Now the first thing I noticed when I got the tank is that although the armour on the model says that it's very good, um, it's really not very good because the massive cupola on top and I'll, I'll probably link some sort of uh, footage behind this um, just showing you the sort of effective armour that the cupola is going to offer and also the lower plate was really weak um, during my like gameplay and that sort of thing and I found uh, it was a bit lacking in armour and considering it doesn't, it isn't the fastest medium tank on the earth like uh, it's definitely something I didn't like but uh, then we come to the gun and the gun is actually surprisingly good I really enjoyed um, actually using this tank and getting like DPM although the DPM statistically is not that good like it's still it's still reasonably good it's better than some tier 8 mediums but um, it's really not that amazing and you're not going to be like out DPMing every single thing on the planet like um, but you definitely need to be checking uh, checking this one out and I'll show you some gameplay footage uh, in a minute and I'm just going to go through some of the stats on Tanks GG in just a second. So here we are on Tanks GG, we've just done a little comparison um, between basically Chieftain T95, um, the CDC, the STA2 and the Type 59 along with the FV4202. Um, which also came in this patch um, and you got it for having the FE4202 like at tier 10 so you've now got it at tier 8 premium um, and we're just going to go through a bit of the stats compare them all and see which how it compares to the other tier 8 premiums and uh, really just get in depth like sort of stats and that sort of thing so as you can see the DPM is not necessarily very good it's kind of um, average in terms of comparison with the Type 59 and the FV4202P um, but then the CDC and the STA2 are just a class above in terms of DPM so they get like an extra 200 DPM pretty much um, and that's uh, that's not necessarily um, that much of a big deal it just means uh, that you've sacrificed um, some of your DPM to get better armor than the CDC and the STA2 um, um, we'll go into some more detail on that in a minute. Um, your penetration is like pretty below average, I'd say. 202 pen, pen on like your on a medium tank of that sort of tier is not necessarily great. And I've bounced quite a few Tiger twos in the lower plates, and I actually I don't know why. Maybe that's just unlucky, but I just feel like the penetration is just not enough. And in comparison to the newly uh, tier eight premium. The FE4202P, it's just nowhere near, like 226 in comparison to 202. That's just uh, not really fair, really. <laughs> but um, So the damage, however, is just pretty average, if we have a look. Uh, 240, 240, 240, and then 250 on the Type 59, but that's not a big step up. And then 230 on the FE4202P. Um, uh, we'll go into the rate of fire, so... The Chieftain gets a pretty poor rate of fire, I'm not going to lie. Um, so it's 7.54, which is much worse than the CDC, much worse than the SDA2. It is also worse than the FE4202P, but we've got to take into account that there is 10 less damage on the FE4202P. So that's why the, um, the other British Tier 8 Premium gets a lower DPM. So really, it's kind of average it's not great and when compared to the cdc and the sta2 you can't really like you can't really do very much um and then we'll look at the calibers so obviously 90 90 90 100 83 so it's really just uh the average type of uh millimeter gun that you're gonna have um it gets a really high ammo capacity, which is good, so you're not going to be running out of rounds or be restricted. Like in the uh, Type 59, I tend to find that 34 is just not enough, especially when you want to carry some games, maybe if you've done loads of damage and that sort of thing. So we'll look at the gun handling now. So the aim time is, is pretty good. Um, it's actually second uh, highest. Well, like 
in terms of uh, when we compare these five tanks. So, um, well, joint second highest. Uh, SDA2 coming in first. Um, the Type 59 having a 2 point, like almost 8 uh, aim time and a 2.21 on the FV4202P. Uh, so it's really it's really decent. It's not great if you put in like a, I don't know gun laying drive You can bring that down to about 1.9 or something similar uh, the accuracy is Pretty poor at 0.35 in comparison to some of the others um, It's the same as the SDA 2 um, and a bit better than type 59, but the uh, fu 4202 p and the CDC have like 0.2 and 0.3 uh, better accuracy um, So if we then have a look at some of the dispersion values, um, it's yet again pretty average uh, So as I'm going to say like the gun feels a bit average in comparison to everything else um, And I don't know it just feels a bit like I Don't know it just feels a bit weird when playing with it um, the depression is uh, Gun depression is actually average as you can see 10 10 10 10 and then 7 on the type 59 but then Chinese are usually um, have crappy gun depression anyway um, so now we'll have a look at the speed so it's really pretty slow in comparison to the other other five except from the fe 4 p which is reasonably slow as well but then British uh, mediums aren't necessarily renowned for being the fastest other than the Centurion Action 10 which has just come in um, and then the reverse speed is the lowest out of everything, so don't don't push up into somewhere if you feel like you might have to pull back. Um, it's got a decent horsepower to ton, although nothing in comparison to the CDC. So we're just going to compare it to the SDA2 and the Type 59 and the fu 422 p And it's definitely uh, a lot better, so you'll be able to kind of get up hills faster than the um, other three tanks and... Yeah, you're not going to be getting up a hill faster than the CDC because that is just ridiculous. Um, and then we're going to have a look at some of the terrain resistances, which is, yet again, pretty good. Um, well, exceptional on hard and uh, medium. And then, yeah, there's just so much better than most of them, uh, except from the fu 42 p which gets ridiculous uh, ground resistances and that sort of thing. Um, turret traverse is pretty good. It's uh, not not as good as uh, the majority of them, so it's actually in the lower half. Um, and the tank traverse is pretty average at like 40, with uh, which is decent. But I feel like you can't really side uh, like kind of get round tanks that well. Like the heavy tanks can just out traverse you, or not out traverse you, but they can like fucking just turn the tracks and the turret and get definitely lock onto you and that sort of thing so they can keep up with your traverse and especially since this tank is huge like on a serious note it's, it is massive um, and it's just nuts it, it really does annoy me sometimes but um, <clears throat> as you can see we'll go on to the armor and the health so uh, the hull armor is one of the best out of them all uh, only losing to the type 59 uh, but the hull armor on the type 59 is pretty ridiculous um, but then we go on to turret, uh, yes it looks really good, so you've got 254mm of frontal uh, turret armour, but then you actually go into the armour model and it's just dreadful, like literally the cupola on top, it just ruins the armour, um, and it's really prominent, you can hit it pretty much without very much uh, like skill, uh, aiming and that sort of thing, so that can be just sniped off really easily. Um, but if they hit your gun mantler anywhere on the turret other than the like top of it, they're just going to bounce. Um, it's really well angled, except from obviously the prominent cupola. The hull armor is not going to be pulling off many bounces, but I have been able to pull off quite a few. Um, not loads though, don't rely on it too much since the lower plate on it is just dreadful and you always get ammo racked, or at least. Am amage rack, ammo rack damaged anyway uh, we'll go on to the view range now so um, you've got 380 view range and it just when you're in a tier 10 game uh, it's just not not nowhere near as good as what you wanted it to be considering like the E5 can bloody outspot you and you're just sat there like yeah brilliant I have a massive cupola on top and it 
doesn't allow my commander to actually have eyes or anything or just do anything but oh well we'll just have to deal with it so it's not the best out of any of them i would have thought it should have got like 400 meters view range especially with that bloody massive um massive cupola i don't understand but maybe they'll have to buff it or something do something towards it but um yeah i i like this tank it took a while to get used to it but it's definitely something that you should be um should be getting if you haven't already i know it's pretty much the op is pretty much ended um but you can still buy it in the store i believe as of recording this um and i was just kind of wanted to do a little review um of what you should be doing uh, i'm gonna have some gameplay in a minute of uh like just me doing a, a reasonably good game like i don't know 3k plus or something like that and just show you and highlight what sort of things you should be using on the tank and how it compares to other tanks bearing in mind that the type 59 has better armor but also has preferential matchmaking um i'm pretty sure so yeah uh watch out for that <laughs> anyway i'll see you in the uh like the recording gameplay um and i'll see you in a sec So here we are on Steps uh, Sandstorm. So this is one of the recent, more recent maps that was introduced. Uh, obviously, we got Pacific Island Typhoon in this latest patch. Uh, not too keen on it. Um, I'm actually all right with Sandstorm. I think it's one of the better ones. Uh, Blizzard is my favourite though, but Typhoon, it really just, I'm not a fan of it really at all. Um, I think considering the normal map only goes up to tier eight, like. Having it a tier 10, especially with them, like, sort of, um, oh, it just wasn't nice. Uh, so we're here on Sandstorm. Uh, we are in, like, a, well, one tier 10 on both teams and a couple of tier 9s, and the rest are tier 8s. Um, so there's an E4 on the enemy team. Uh, I'm platooned up with a couple of my friends. So we got uh, Owen, uh, Dolly, and uh, Salty. Um, and we're basically just pretty annoyed that we were in this sort of matchup but yet again it's majority tier 8 so we weren't that bothered um so me and uh fallout have gone down to like the alphabet line um and we're just going to try and uh do see what we can do over here um i'm really i find this tank is actually pretty good uh although i'm not i really don't like these sort of weather effects i think the view range is just a bit too much like um Especially since, like, artillery can be on these maps. Um, I think they should just not be able to go on these maps, considering they're trying to make it realistic. But then, if artillery can be firing shells, like, exactly straight and fucking hitting tanks on the move, like, that's just retarded. Like, please just at least sort out some, some of the view range, like, aspects. Maybe reduce, like, how much it actually affects view range i don't mind it affecting view range but maybe something like uh uh is it arctic region snow or some mountain pass or something like that where they've got slightly reduced um view range but not too much um so as you can see we've got a fair old amount of our team going down this left hand side um <coughs> and there's uh the tiger 2 over there i get in the way because i'm a potato me driving so badly um as you can see this tank is huge like on a serious level we try and go for the shot on the motherland but he just pulls back and gets unspotted anyway uh, so i'm just set up here um just waiting for some shots we try and go for this motherland but we just bounce straight off and get spotted which isn't great we then get hit by a few of the enemy tanks there <clears throat> we aim for the uh su 101 but i think we hit the um was it the t10 or something uh, so we put one into the motherland as well and uh, this SU 101 doesn't really last very long uh, we have the stupid aim assist on which I kind of can't play without anyway uh, we finish off the SU 101 and it's kind of getting into a bit brawling here so this tank is pretty good at brawling as long as you can keep your gun singing like that uh, we picked up uh, 
some nice kills there. So we got one, and we picked up four damaging hits. We try and uh, take out this 5100 who's harassing uh, Fallout here. Um, and we're just trying to hold off on this corner. We see that the E4 is actually spotted in the open in the middle of the uh, field. I don't know what he was doing. I try and spot him again, but we can't really do very much, unfortunately. I think we do get spotted in a minute. Sorry about the pop-up there, um, which is kind of unfortunate. See, we get we get detected, hoping it's not the E4 that's uh, actually looking at us. Um, we see the Motherland. We actually damaged a Tiger by bouncing off the Motherland, I think it is. Um, and we pulled off a bounce there, or at least managed to. We then take out the Tiger 2 who was retreating. I thought he might have been killed by the fire, but I just hold it, uh, held off for a bit. But he didn't actually die to the fire. We try and put a shot into the KB4 clutch there, but sadly he just whiffs over. Which is kind of annoying, but then, you know, it just happens sometimes. We uh, we have a look at the KB4. KB4 bounces us, but we don't bounce. We aim for his Capola and it goes in. Um... And I'm just thinking at this moment, the enemy team have pushed down to the right hand side as well. Um, and we've been focused quite a lot up here. So there's the KB4 there. We go for a side shot on his turret. And we actually managed to pen. So we see that the E4 is actually fired. So I just poke over. And I try and aim this one. And it goes into his like lower left of his hole. And I'm just thinking... I don't want to get shot by him, but he's uh, finished off before he could probably reload anyway. Um, so now I'm thinking, do I really want to get some shots into them guys, or do I want to go for a bit more damage? And so I really think I'm going to go over to the right-hand side. Um, I don't really want to finish off two like really low-health tanks. And I know that the SU no, ISU-152 is over there, but you know I, I'm pretty sure like six or seven of our team can finish him off. So we've actually picked up three kills and around, I'd say, maybe 2,000 damage, 1,800 or something. Something along those lines, considering we got the three kills and we don't know how much we actually rolled for to actually kill them. I'm pretty sure one of them was actually only 77, so I'd say we're around the 1,800 damage mark. As you can see, the uh, there's three of our team over there, and we're just going to go and try and help them out. There is four tanks alive, but... Um, I think there's only two over there, uh, and I believe the other one is actually camping in base, one of the tank destroyers. I'm not sure which one it was, but as you can see, the 5120 is actually getting pushed by this IS-3. Um, and I'm not sure whether he survives or not, but we're going to go and try and just push our advantage down onto the IS-3 and see what we can do. There's a T-30 there. Um, I'm pretty sure he's actually down uh, here near, near us. Uh, so we've picked up three kills. One of our uh, platoon mates actually picked up four. So the F uh, I think the SU-12254 is in the enemy base. So we pop one into the T-30 and Amarak, or damages Amarak anyway. And he gets finished off there. We then see the Centennial on full health and I'm thinking, oh, this is damage. Damage. So we just, uh, we just wait. <clears throat> and we're basically just trying to get them extra shots in. So we reloaded. We're going to wait until we can definitely shoot him. We put one into him, and then we just, hopefully, we can get the kill. Do we get the kill? Yes, we do. We pick up the final 132 damage, and that's our fourth kill. 14 penetration, seven, uh, seven like, damage, critical damage, three spotted targets, and a tracked assist. So we're just going to have a look at the uh, post-game results and see what sort of things we actually managed to pick up. So we actually got 1,940 base XP, 95%er, uh, 2,826 damage and 886 assisted. And as you can see, our platoon representing up at the top and the usual Doddy special down halfway down the board with only like two shots of damage. <laughs> but oh well, that's alright. Uh, so that was a pretty good game, I'm not going to lie. Um, and we managed to do quite well as a team. We managed to pick up 81,000 um, silver. and So that about wraps up the game there. Um, we got 4 kills and 2.8k damage with 800 assisted. Um, and basically I wanted to also highlight what sort of equipment you should be using. So I use gun rammer, vents and also vert stabs. Although you could warrant taking coated optics considering the view range isn't great. And then the sort of perks you want to be using are like clutch braking, smooth ride, uh, snapshot 
um, Six Cents obviously have that first and then Brothers in Arms um, and I'll be doing like a, a medium tanks crew skills guide as well so watch out for that one on the channel if you did like this video please hit that like button and subscribe for more content that about wraps up the video and I'll see you in the next one